Okay, here we have a PicoSoft simulation of the customer needs project. This project requires that a conveyor motor run for four and a half seconds after an operator hits a start button. It also requires that we turn on a solenoid every time a bad part limit switch is tripped. The customer wants the solenoid pulled in for at least two seconds to ensure bad parts get knocked off the conveyor. Here, here we see our inputs. Uh, we have a start button, a stop button or push button, and a bad part limit switch. Here we have outputs. Uh, we have a motor and a solenoid. Uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll hit the start button uh, and you can see that the motor turns on for four and a half seconds and then it turns off. Uh, if we look at counter, counter number one, we can see that it has a value of one. This counter increments each time the motor is started. Uh, now as the process is running, if I hit the bad part limit switch, we can see that the solenoid turns on for two seconds and then turns off. This will happen every time I hit the limit switch. If I hit the stop push button and stop the process, you can see that if I hit the uh, limit switch now, nothing happens. The solenoid stays off. If I hit the start button again, you can see the motor turning on and off. If we take a look at the counter, it now has a value of 2. Uh, now I'm going to hit the stop button. Then I'll hit the start button again. And you, can, and you can see if I hit the limit switch right away, the solenoid turns on even when the motor is on. The motor and solenoid timers and functions are independent of one another. The last thing I'll demonstrate is starting the process and then hitting the stop button while the motor is on. If I do this, you can see that the motor turns off immediately when I hit the stop button. This is for safety. The stop button should always turn everything off. Well, that concludes this demonstration. Thank you.